Hey guys, welcome back to Tried, Tested, and True Instant Pot Cooking, where I share with you Instant Pot inspirations and ways to feel confident using your Instant Pot. I'm Lisa Childs, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the top seven vegetables to make in your Instant Pot. Steamed vegetables are some of the best and healthiest way to enjoy vegetables. And so I thought we'd kick off the new year with seven of the best vegetables to make in your Instant Pot. Let's jump right in with how to make Instant Pot artichokes. Artichokes are an extremely healthy, delicious, savory, very meaty vegetable that's actually really fun to eat and it takes kind of a long time to eat so you get filled up really quickly. Usually you would have to steam or bake your artichokes for sometimes over an hour in order to get them soft enough to eat because otherwise it's just like eating a very fibrousy, leafy plant. It's not very good if it's undercooked. So let me show you the best way to make them in an instant pot. So first you have your whole full artichoke and this is about one pound. If your artichoke is over one pound, then you can find those directions on my website. But this artichoke that we have here today is about exactly one pound. After you wash your artichoke, we want to cut it down a little bit before we get to pressure cooking. If the stem on your artichoke is really long, you'll want to cut it down till it's about half an inch long on the base. And then we're going to cut about the top quarter off of the artichoke. Cutting the top quarter off of the artichoke helps to just let you open it up a little bit easier and it's a little bit easier to get cooked inside when it doesn't have that top kind of closing it off. So we're gonna cut off the top quarter and then I like to kind of open it up with my fingers and just spread it apart just a tiny bit. And then we are going to cut off some of those outer leaves. These outer leaves on an artichoke are extremely sharp and they can cut you. In fact, I think I get cut every single time I make Instant Pot artichokes. So very carefully take your whole artichoke and I like to just take some kitchen shears and just snip off the very tops of those outer leaves. That just helps it to be easier to handle and um, it's just not quite so violent. <laughs> Next add one cup of water to your Instant Pot and then we're going to place our artichoke in the Instant Pot. You can do it either on top of the metal trivet that the Instant Pot comes with or I like to just put mine in a steamer basket so then I can just set it in and pull it out really quickly. I've experimented with Instant Pot artichokes several times and it doesn't really matter if you cook them cut side down or cut side up, so I'm just going to do them cut side up today. After you place your artichoke in the Instant Pot, just put on that lid, lock it closed, and turn the sealing knob from venting to sealing. For this one pound artichoke, I am going to do 25 minutes on high pressure, but I cannot stress this enough. If your artichoke is even a tiny bit larger than this, I would add three to six minutes from this time. If your artichoke is like one and a half pounds, I would go for 40 to 45 minutes. I'm telling you this because I've waited 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 35 minutes only to open up my Instant Pot and then the artichoke is still raw. And it is disgusting when it's raw. You can't eat it like that. So in my personal opinion, I would prefer to overcook the artichoke just a little bit rather than undercooking it. Because when you undercook it, there's not anything to eat <laughs> on the leaves of the artichoke. So you want to make sure that you cook it enough so you get something when you scrape those leaves with your teeth. After the artichoke is done pressure cooking, let's just take it out of the Instant Pot with a quick release after the 25 minutes has lapsed and then you are ready to eat. After pressure cooking, now it's really simple. Just go ahead and eat it. So if you've never eaten an artichoke before, I actually had to Google it the first time, you want to just take off some of those leaves. You can start all the way from the outside, but it does get meatier the closer you get to that yummy artichoke heart. You just take one of those leaves and then we like to dip it in butter, but I know a lot of people like to dip in mayonnaise or an aioli or some other kind of sauce. But I like just a little bit of butter and some fresh lemon juice. And then you just dunk those leaves in there and then you scrape it with your teeth. So you just put the leaf in your mouth 
and then just pull it and pull that flesh off of the leaf, leaf? <laughs> with your teeth and they're so good you guys so fun and a really fun thing to do for like a special occasion maybe valentine's day or game day but also it is a really healthy food as well so that is how to make artichokes in your instant pot the next vegetable i always cook in my instant pot are sweet potatoes Sweet potatoes are so good for you. They're very complex carb. They're very rich in nutrients. They're very bright and orange and happy and they really are so good for you. So we love making them in our Instant Pot. First, when you buy your sweet potatoes, make sure that they are the orange variety. You don't want the tan yams. You want to get the orange sweet potato. Try and buy sweet potatoes that are as uniform in size as possible. You don't want to get some tiny ones and then like a three pound huge one. You want to find them as close in size and shape as possible so then they cook evenly. After you wash your sweet potatoes, let's just go ahead and pressure cook them. You don't need to poke any holes or do anything like that. We will just cook these whole, but of course, if you want them to cook faster, you can cut them into cubes or you can cut the sweet potato into quarters, whatever you want. But a whole potato is just really convenient. You just throw it in the Instant Pot and it'll be done in a snap. Again, we're gonna start with one cup of water in the Instant Pot and then I like to put my sweet potatoes either on the trivet or in a steamer basket. Sometimes when they are done cooking, the skins will just slip right off. And so it's nice to be able to have the basket so I can just pull it straight out of the Instant Pot without having to worry about like the, the sweet potato like falling apart when I grab it with tongs or, or anything like that because they're super hot. So I prefer to use the steamer basket when I make these sweet potatoes. For small, whole sweet potatoes, I like to cook them between 15 and 20 minutes. For medium to large sweet potatoes, we do 20 to 25, and for large sweet potatoes, it's between 25 and 30 minutes. If your sweet potatoes are ginormous, I would recommend either cutting them in half or just tacking on an extra five to eight minutes. After they're done pressure cooking, just do a quick release and then you're ready to eat your sweet potatoes. So take off that lid and then transfer them to a plate or a Tupperware or whatever you're eating on and then they're ready to enjoy. I don't eat the skin on my sweet potatoes, but I love to eat them actually for breakfast. I like to do like some sweet potato, scrambled egg, um, some broccoli, some sausage, and then I like to actually put a little bit of cottage cheese on my sweet potato and then I just eat it like that. Just really weird, simple, but healthy breakfast. The next vegetable I love to make in my Instant Pot is spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash is a really healthy, low carb vegetable that kind of mimics the appearance of pasta. So if you're low carb, it's a really good alternative to use in place of spaghetti because it's kind of the same, I mean, it's not really the same texture, but it looks similar because it's these beautiful strands of squash and it's actually really good too. Spaghetti squash is actually a really firm vegetable, so sometimes it can be hard to cut it before it's cooked. That's why I like to just throw the whole thing in my Instant Pot with a cup of water. So I'll put it either on the trivet or again, if it fits in my steamer basket and then it's just ready to go and I don't have to worry about like breaking my knife or, or breaking breaking my arm trying to cut into this really hard squash because it is, it can be challenging. So that's something to keep in mind. If you don't maybe have the strength, then just put it in your Instant Pot hole. You don't have to poke holes in it, you're totally fine. So add your spaghetti squash into the Instant Pot with a cup of water and then lock the lid, turn the knob to ceiling, and then we are going to cook this whole spaghetti squash for 20 minutes. This spaghetti squash that I have here is about three pounds, just for your reference. If yours is larger than that, then you're going to have to cook it a little bit longer. So I recommend tacking on maybe three to five minutes and then see how your squash looks from there. You can always test to see how your squash looks after cooking and if it's still crunchy or if it's still hard, then we'll just pressure cook again for a couple minutes, no big deal. All right, after it's done cooking, do a quick release and then remove your spaghetti squash from the Instant Pot. This is one reason why I like to just use the basket. I can just pull it out and um, I don't have to worry about it falling apart in the Instant Pot with like tongs or anything like that. So that's just why I like to use the basket. 
Also, I forgot to mention, if you want to cut your spaghetti squash in half before you start pressure cooking, that's totally fine and it will actually save you some cook time. You can reduce the cook time by about three minutes. So I like to test my spaghetti squash, make sure that a knife or a fork can pierce all the way into the center and then I'll know it's probably done. And then I'll put it onto a cutting board. I like to let it cool for just a couple of minutes too because it's really hot to handle. So that's something to be aware of. After you let your spaghetti squash cool, you can now cut it. And there's two options for this. If you cut your spaghetti squash through the stem, so if you cut it long ways, you will get some shorter strands. If you cut your spaghetti squash through the middle, then you will get longer strands. No matter which way you cut your spaghetti squash, now we have to take out the seeds. So cut the spaghetti squash in half, and then we're just gonna scrape all those seeds out of the center of your squash, and then you can discard those. Next, all you have to do is just kind of fluff and scrape those strands off of the sides of the shell, and then you're ready to eat. Sometimes they can retain a lot of moisture, so sometimes I will just strain them and kind of push this, the spaghetti squash through a strainer to remove some of the excess moisture if I'm going to add it into a dish because I don't want it to be watered down. But this is ready to go. It's a really good meal prep food because you can just make a bunch of it and then toss it into anything that you want. One thing I like to do with spaghetti squash made in the Instant Pot is to just mix like half in with some spaghetti noodles and give it to my kids that way with sauce. They don't even know the difference and they're eating half of the amount of carbs and they're adding some vegetables into their food as well. If you're eating low carb or keto, check out my new recipe for Instant Pot spaghetti squash with lemon cream sauce. It is so simple, but so delicious. It's low carb, it has heavy cream and lemon. It's just bright and fresh and you are gonna love it. The next vegetable we are going to make in our Instant Pot is cauliflower. So do you call it cauliflower or cauliflower? Because I call it cauliflower and my husband makes fun of me every single time. So that is the debate that we will, I'm sure, have in the comments if you've made it this far. So let me know. Um, but anyways, let's just jump right in into how to make cauliflower in your Instant Pot. First, you wanna wash and cut your cauliflower, cauliflower, whatever, I don't care. I'll call it cauliflower. Apparently that is the right way to, to say it. So cut your and cut and wash your cauliflower into florets. You wanna make sure that they are as evenly cut as possible. And if you don't wanna cut like a whole head of cauliflower, you can buy little bags in the uh, produce section of your grocery store. I've seen them pretty much everywhere. You can just get them pre-cut, pre-washed. It's really convenient. So that's what I'm using today. We'll just add a cup or two of cauliflower florets. You can add however much you are going to eat into a steamer basket. And then we are going to add one cup of water. Lock the lid and turn the knob to ceiling. And then we will cook this cauliflower for one minute on high pressure with a quick release. This does not have to cook long and we don't want mushy cauliflower. So that is why we're gonna do one minute with a quick release. After you have removed the lid, check your cauliflower with a knife or a fork to make sure it's the tenderness that you want. If it's not quite all the way cooked, all you have to do is just put the lid back on the Instant Pot and just wait about two to three minutes and that will just have the residual heat cook the cauliflower all the way through. Don't pressure cook the cauliflower again because we don't want to overcook it, but just let the residual heat from the Instant Pot steam and then it will be cooked just fine. <laughs> now you can take this cauliflower out and use it for I don't know, however you eat steamed cauliflower. I like to smother mine with butter and cheese, but you know, that's just me. But obviously it's healthier if you just eat it plain. <laughs> the next best vegetable to make in your Instant Pot is Instant Pot broccoli. First, take your broccoli, and I like to just use the pre-cut and washed kind, and then I like to put it in a steamer basket, but if you don't have a steamer basket, feel free to use a steamer net. If you don't have one of those, you can use the trivet. Just make sure your broccoli is not cut too small so it doesn't fall through. You just don't want it sitting in the water. So next, add a cup of water and then your broccoli. Put the lid on the Instant Pot and turn the knob from venting to sealing. And then we're gonna cook for zero minutes. 
That's right. Wait until the pin pops up and then you will see an L on the screen saying that it's done pressure cooking. And then you want to do a quick release right away. You don't want to overcook your broccoli. So do a quick release and then we're going to check for doneness. Use a fork or a knife and just poke it into one of the thickest pieces of broccoli. And if it's still not fork tender, just replace the lid right back onto your Instant Pot. You do not want to pressure cook again. Just let the residual heat cook through the broccoli. After that, just remove it as quickly as possible from the Instant Pot. And then you're ready to eat your perfectly cooked Instant Pot broccoli. Next, I'm gonna teach you how to make baby carrots in your Instant Pot. I like to get baby carrots just because they're inexpensive, they're easy, they're easy to snack on, and I almost always have them in my fridge. So this is how you make baby carrots, but this also applies to whole carrots that you can just cut up into chunks that are about the same size as a baby carrot. Add one to two cups of baby carrots to a steamer basket and then place it in your Instant Pot with one cup of water. Put the lid on your Instant Pot and then turn the knob from venting to sealing. I've tested this many times and my favorite time, I guess, for a tender but not mushy baby carrot is three minutes on high pressure with a quick release. And like I mentioned before, if after three minutes your baby carrots are not quite done, then you can just replace the lid and just wait one to two minutes and wait for that residual heat and steam to cook your carrots all the way through. I always think it's better to undercook these types of vegetables rather than overcook because it doesn't take very long to heat them through if they're undercooked, but if they're overcooked, most of the time they're gross. <laughs> And last, one of the most common things I make in my Instant Pot are baked potatoes or just steamed potatoes. That's all it really is. But they're so convenient to make in the Instant Pot when I don't want to heat up my oven and they're so fast as well. Just add a cup of water to your Instant Pot and then add your potatoes in a steamer basket. If you don't have a steamer basket, that's okay. Just put them on top of the trivet. Make sure that your potatoes are clean and you scrub off as much dirt as possible and that you pick potatoes that are as uniform in shape and size as possible. Put the lid on the Instant Pot and turn the knob to sealing and then press the manual or pressure cook button and set the time to 12 to 14 minutes for small potatoes, 15 to 18 minutes for medium potatoes, and 20 to 25 minutes for large potatoes. You can do a quick release after the timer is up or you can also leave them to naturally release the pressure, but just keep in mind they keep cooking during that time so they might get a little browned. Now just remove the potatoes and I like to stick a knife in them just to ensure that they're done cooking. And if they're not, there's a little bit of resistance, then you'll want to just put the lid back on and cook for an additional three to five minutes. We like serving our Instant Pot baked potatoes with butter and sour cream and pepper. It's so good, but you can use any toppings you love. Thanks for watching this video on the best vegetables to make in your Instant Pot. Make sure you check out my seven essential recipes every Instant Pot owner needs to know next. See ya.